JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Thaddeus on Charles, because today's the 3rd of May 2021. So yep, welcome everyone guys. Welcome to this Monday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you just a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFT YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFT Bank website and specifically our JFT research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So feel free to visit us here on JFTBank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top, guys. So now, well, I, all, I hope you all had a fantastic weekend, uh, um, so I th hope you're kind of back to the markets, all relaxed and, and fresh. Um, yeah, we can see in the chat room here, uh, Evo, good morning, good morning to you too. Uh, so I hope, I hope you, uh, everybody's having a wonderful start of the day. Um, now, jumping into the charts, the first one I want to pick up here is um, uh, Nikkei 225. Now, the index is closed or was closed today, I would say. Um, but, um, yep, uh, as you can see, I mean, where we left off last week, this is just a quick update of, of, of Nikkei, um, where the index where we left off, I mean, the index kind of remained f somewhat flat, if I'm not mistaken, for the week. Let me just double check this very quickly. Um, slightly in the negative zone. So, okay. Um, Nevertheless, we are still stuck above this upside support line taken from the low of the um, of the 19th of March of 2020. So even if we do see a bit of a drop, drop lower here, um, we could kind of see a rebound, a potential rebound from this area because here and near this upside line, we also have the 100-day uh, EMA here shown as the green line and basically we do have this strong area of support near the 28,326 zone. And uh, uh, basically kind of all this could still provide a bit of support. Um, but of course we'll keep an eye on it. Um, also, it might not even travel here. Instead, it starts if it starts pushing higher and I would say if it climbs somewhere above the high of last week here near the um, 29,241 zone right here, then yes, we could maybe consider a, a bit of a, a larger move higher because at the same time, time, um, the price would be placed above the 21 day EMA as well. And meant, well, potentially more, uh, more buyers could see this as a good opportunity to step in. Uh, now jumping into Hong Kong's Hang Seng index. And, uh, this one, it was, oh, or it's just, it is still open. Um, but as you can see, um, last week I've talked about this idea where I said that we might see a bit of a, a, a rising channel here. Um, and if, um, as long as the boundaries remain intact here, then yes, it could continue moving within the rising channel. But as we saw on the 30th of April, the last trading day of the of April, yep, it drifted lower and uh, tested the lower side of the rising channel. Uh, this morning, <coughs> excuse me, this morning we are seeing a break and uh, well, I mean, what's most important here is that of course at the moment, um, not only the fact that it broke this upside line, uh, this ups well, the subside line, but the, uh, the lower side of the rising channel, but also the fact that we are currently getting a hold up near this 108 EMA together with these two levels. 
uh, the 28,274 uh, and the 28,326. So uh, for now, I would say we'll keep a close eye on this area. If it stays somewhere above this or if it stays, for example, above this 100-day uh, EMA, then maybe we could see a bit of a rebound here back towards this lower side of the rising channel. But um, if, um, if, it, if it doesn't rebound here, if it stays somewhere below this, this whole area, then, well, I mean, my next target is the 27,505 zone here marked by the lowest point of March which also coincides almost coincides with the 208 EMA so keep that in mind guys um, like I said a lot uh, is happening here near this area right here which is quite important I would say and uh, let's see how this is gonna play out now jumping into DAX the German index and uh, yep uh, we mm, we had a bit of a decline um, on Friday here, and uh, yeah, I mean, let's see how today's day is going to play out. Um, let me just double check here very quickly. So in terms of the market closures, so okay, so we have the, okay, uh, so we have Britain, which is it's closed today, Japan. Japan and uh, China has Labor Day. However, Hong Kong is was open, so yeah. Um, Okay, um, yeah, that's fine. Um, so uh, the uh, the German index DAX, I mean, it's it's gonna be should be open. I think, yeah, it will be open. Um, and uh, but don't expect maybe much volatility. I would say maybe during the European session. I would maybe uh, more of, of volatility could come in during the U.S. session. But of course, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, but long story short, coming from this at the moment. <clears throat> I would say um, I'm keeping a close eye on this whole area right here. I'm looking at this 21-day um, EMA because right now the cash index seems to be trading um, slightly above this 21-day EMA, slightly above this uh, 15,150 uh, zone. But if we get another slide below that area, then yes, we will start uh, aiming lower. Uh, we'll aim for the uh, 15,072 territory. But if this gets cleared, guys, I mean, this is where um, it would, could be, become a little bit more interesting for more sellers because such a move here would confirm a forthcoming lower low and, uh, well, further declines could be possible. So, <clears throat> so keep that in mind. But at the moment, again, um, I w with the upside, if you want to look at some higher levels, well, um, you need to kind of um, wait probably for <clears throat> um, at least a push above this um, this downside line. And previously I talked about this 15,312 territory, but now probably need it's time to adjust this area. I mean, I was keeping an eye on it um, last week, and last week it was per working out interestingly because we never got uh, that uh, close above that area um, here. And uh, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up on the high of last week near the 15,355 level and a nice good pop above it may or it may attract more buyers um, but uh, until then I'm gonna take a neutral stand I would say on this one and I'm just gonna keep an eye on some of the levels uh, now jumping into DXY and uh, here uh, DXY is, um, yep, uh, pushing nicely to the upside. And as you can see, this is what happened on Friday. And this is what I kept saying to you guys, um, that wait for that pop, wait for that move, and wait for that kind of confirmation, uh, kind of break above some certain you know, key resistance levels. So uh, for me, for the downside, what I needed was um, a a good push above the 91.05 territory. And I, would, I needed to see the daily candle staying above this area as well. You know, order to uh, let's say get a little bit more excited with the upside so far I mean uh, I can see that yes we've managed to reach the 21 day EMA uh, we're currently getting a hold up here so now if you want to go slowly step by step then probably um, wait for a push above this this whole area here the uh, 91.42 49 territory approximately around here um, if we get a nice push above it then yep uh, higher levels could be met guys so for now long story short uh, we are uh, we are still on the, a little bit on the positive side here on DXY, uh, but uh, this confirmation push above the uh, above this whole area here near the 91.40 well between the 91.4249 would be needed. But at the same time, we would have the uh, price already placed above the 21-day EMA, and potentially more buyers could join in. Um, now, gold. Uh, 
gold is pushing higher now this is where sometimes dxy and gold don't really kind of uh, work in tandem um, and uh, you can see that uh, gold is trying to make its way higher however um, I'll stick to the same plan game plan as uh, last week I would prefer to wait for a push up of the 1798 territory right here uh, because that's the highest point of April and at the same time if we get a push up of this level we would also be already placed above the uh, all of these EMAs here and uh, maybe more buyers could see this as a good opportunity because at the same time a break above this level would confirm a forthcoming higher high. Uh, for the downside now uh, this is where the point probably where I'm going to start getting rid of this downside line um, we had a good run so yep but it's time to say farewell um, of course it continues to kind of play out as a, a bit of a trampoline here but um, yeah let's uh, probably remove it and what I'm gonna stick to of course is uh, the some of these uh, key support levels and one of them them of course is that 1760 territory right here so a nice good drop below the 1760 uh, kind of would place already the pr uh, the price below the 21 day EMA and uh, more sellers could join in. Um, WTI oil, so uh, drifting lower and uh, look at this beautiful move here to the downside on Friday and uh, we managed to stay below the 63.80 territory. Now this morning we already managed to test that area from underneath and as you can see it provided good resistance and we're now drifting lower. So to be honest I'm leaning towards the downside right now uh, just be uh, again in the short run because let's not forget that we are still trading above this upside support line taken from the low the 5th of April. So what it means now, if we get a nice good drop, uh, let me just recycle one of these lines here. If we get a nice drop below this, uh, the, the low of Friday here near the 63.11 territory approximately around here, um, then yes, we could go for a bit of a, a bit of a decline here towards the subside line, towards the 21 day EMA, and then we could stall here for a little bit because if the bulls are uh, strong enough, they might we might see a rebound and a push uh, back up. Um, however, However, if um, if if it if it fails to provide support and we see a drop below the 21-day EMA, yes, this could increase the uh, commodities chances of drifting uh, lower here. But um, preferably, I would say that I would, my preference is still kind of more, uh, let's say, um, to wait for a break below the 60.64 territory, approximately around here, um, in order to get a little bit more excited with further declines. For now, I would say, yes, we could see a move lower up until this upside line. And then I would say we would need to take it from there because uh, we need to see how this is gonna play out here. Maybe if it, if it breaks it, perfect okay well perfect for the sellers um, but if it holds we might see a nice rebound back up here and uh, well um, in that case I mean what I would like to see here is um, a push back above the um, 63.80 territory again here I would like to see the daily candle staying above it in order to go for the, for the upside now Bitcoin <clears throat> so um, Bitcoin is a little bit lagging here if we're comparing it to for example Ripple or Ethereum but nevertheless slowly slowly grinding higher so uh, the overall picture here looks like that we are still trading above this upside line um, although I would say maybe a bit of a tentative line right now because we had a violation right here um, and uh, but nevertheless I'm gonna keep that for now on the chart uh, we'll see how it plays out in relation to the upside line so <clears throat> um, in a way, for now, we managed to climb above this area, this 55,555 level. This is what I talked about, guys. If you remember in the beginning of last week, so we had that pop and uh, yeah, uh, this opened the door now to some higher levels. Now my next um, kind of, not target, but the next level that I'm keeping an eye on is of course the high of last week near the 58,326 zone. A nice good pop above this, and this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and uh, yep, uh, it might, <coughs> excuse me, it might open the door towards these higher levels here but um, again uh, for now guys um, of course yes I'm going I'm slowly going to the upside um, because as you can see we're uh, keep we keep on forming these little beautiful bullish flags here um, everything's really very very technical right now um, so if we do pop above this area then yes my next target um, well I wouldn't say maybe even uh, that my next target is the all-time high 
but um, probably initially I'll aim for this little territory um, around the 61,243 uh, zone. But that's again approximately around there, uh, just because it previously acted as a good area of resistance and support. And uh, yep, uh, then we'll take it from there. For the downside, well, pretty straightforward. A break of the upside line would be needed, and also just to kind of strengthen that. Uh, bearish case maybe uh, a drop below the 52,377 territory could be ideal here for more sellers then we could start aiming for that lowest point of April near the 47,112 uh, but if that gets cleared this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and further declines could be possible okay now jumping into pairs a few pairs here and um, okay so let me just have a quickly quickly have a look at uh, what's happening in the, in the economic calendar. So yeah, okay, um, we had the um, Australian manufacturing PMI figures, which kind of came out um, better than the previous figure, but. Um, uh, here it's mainly kind of the strength on the US dollar that's kicking in and uh, um, a bit of a weakness in the um, a bit of a weakness in the kind of an, in the equity world so that's the kind of this little uh, result here this little effect um, um, we're, that we're seeing here we're breaking this upside line um, however as if you remember previously I said that in order to go for the downside not only a break of this upside um, line line is needed but also a drop below this hurdle the 0.7690 is territory right here uh, because at the same time uh, more sellers could join in this uh, this would also place the pair below the 21 day EMA and uh, yep um, it could be a nice opportunity here for the bears for the upside for the bulls um, well I'll take a bit of a conservative approach here and uh, wait for a push above this area above this barrier the high of the, the highest point of April, if I'm not mistaken, let me just double check this is 07859. Uh, yes, that's the highest point of uh, April. Um, a nice good pop above it, yes, could um, could lead to some higher levels, but at the moment, we're nowhere there, nowhere that level. That's why we will uh, for now uh, be leaning a little bit more towards the downside. But again, as I said, a drop below this hurdle would be needed. Oh, and by the way, let me just correct myself a little bit here. We are already below the 21 day EMA. I kind of looked at the wrong spot here. So sorry, uh, my bad on this one. We are already below the 21 day EMA. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, that what's could kind of uh, strengthen the or say give a little a bit of strength for the downside scenario and uh, then yeah we'll take it from there now um AUDNZD is slightly a bit of a well slightly a different story here um as you can see uh so far uh this falling veg pattern which i've mentioned from the beginning of last week continues to uh, play out just perfectly i mean look at this move i mean last week i said that keep your eyes on the up upper side here of the upper bound of the falling veg because if it holds we could see a slide and yes we did we dropped below this highlighted territory uh which to be honest we can actually now um <clears throat> adjust i believe so just let me just quickly uh, yeah we will adjust this highlighted territory oh no wrong the wrong wrong one uh wrong one there we go um okay let me just draw this one back here um a bit of a destruction happening here so so um we will uh keep an eye on uh now now we will keep an eye on this little support zone this is where the pair found uh support last week and this is the low of the uh, 9th of March. So um, for now, we can see that, yes, we had a nice, beautiful rebound here, but we are still within the falling channel. Now, uh, last week, I said to you guys that, uh, yes, these patterns tend to be uh, bullish indication. Um, however, however, we need the confirmation break bef uh, above the uh, upper side of the, uh, the falling wedge before, let's say, getting comfortable with higher levels. Um, or and in this situation probably I would even say maybe also a push above the 1.0792.93 territory could do the trick for more buyers as well so again keep your eyes on this one keep your eyes on today today on this upper side of the uh, of the of the falling veg and also what you need to keep an eye on of course is the daily candle because Again, we might get a push higher, we might get a pop here, but if at the end of the day it just comes back inside this pattern, well, I mean, 
well, we're, we're just going to have ourselves a nice false breakout. Um, so that's why be very careful. Yes, if we see a pu push through that area um, higher, then yes, uh, this could be a start of something interesting for the bulls, but um, let's keep an eye on, on see and see how the daily candle is going to end up being. Um, if it still stays below this down, uh, below this um, upper side of the falling veg, then well, I mean maybe it could play out nicely along along aside this this arrow here to the downside. Uh, GPP Aussie, quick update. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because still the same analysis here is valid. Uh, we are still stuck between these two lines. So basically we're coiling up here a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, we are uh, keep waiting, waiting for that uh, nice good clear break through the one of these uh, lines in before considering the next short term, short term directional move guys. Uh, USDCH chef, so quick update. Yes, we are trying to climb higher. As you can see, uh, we are currently um, back above this 0 0.9129 territory, so that's kind of good news. We, but we are getting a hold up near this 100-day EMA. Um, so um, I would say that yes, we might see a push higher if we climb over the 100-day EMA, shown as the green line here. But um, there, I mean, a little bit higher, we have some obstacles, so some some resistance areas, and uh, which kind of could, um, let's say, slow down the up move. Um, that's why I would say be very careful for now. I mean, it is a little bit messy here, I would say. Uh, we could try to keep an eye on, for example, the 0 0.9173 territory, which um, also kind of acted as a good area of, of resistance recently. So, and at the same time, if we get a pop above this area, then yes, we could get a pop above these remaining EMAs, and then maybe more buyers could join in. But um, at the moment, I'm probably um, all eyes are going to be on, on this 100 day EMA. If we climb above, Above it, we we could go for some higher levels. If uh, and then we'll go we'll go step by step on this one because again, uh, let's not uh, try to predict the future too much. Um, and uh, and for the downside, pretty straightforward. Uh, drop below last week's low. Yep. That's what we need. Uh, a drop below the 0 0.9080 territory here. That's what we need in order to consider uh, the downside, at least in the short run. Um, and uh, your GBP also quick update. Um, again, not much has changed, uh, but it's just it's just the one that I keep watching right now because it's really really interesting, and probably uh, a lot of people are are already trying to be bullish here. Um, they're trying to kind of aim for some higher levels because again, all this kind of pattern, the Yosef course that creates a nice kind of positive atmosphere here um, <clears throat> however however um, as I said before um, wait for that move above this area because as you can see we keep coming close we're flirting with this area but we're not really pushing higher um, that's why I don't want to kind of get caught out caught out here in anything like for example we could see a push higher it could flirt with this area again and then kind of reverse and break this upside line and drop lower so at the moment yes the upside line is providing support but um, Mm, it's it's again it's one of those and, uh, and don't forget that we're we're dealing here with euro gbp and uh, that one is uh, to be honest it's sometimes a tricky one so be very careful with euro gbp and uh, let's see uh, let's see how this is going to play out here but um yeah i would probably say definitely have your stop loss in place. Um, and finally, Euro USD. So a uh, beautiful, beautiful drift lower here broke this broke below these uh, these lines. Um, and uh, yeah, this is what I said to you guys last week that if we stay below this, then yeah, further declines could be possible. And look at this. We dropped below this, and now my next target is the 21-day EMA together with this 1.1990 zone. But if that fails to provide resist, oh sorry, so resistance support, then yes, we could go for further declines here. So keep your eyes on this, and uh, yep. Um, for now, for now, uh, I'm keeping an eye on this 1.1990 zone, and uh, um, if we get a drop below this area, below this hurdle, then, yep, uh, further declines could be possible. I'll repeat myself probably, yes, um, yeah. But at the moment, guys, in terms of the upside, um, this is where the point where we will get rid of these two lines, because, to be honest, no longer valid, and uh, mainly focus on some of the 
mm, key uh, support uh, well, resistance levels and probably I'll take a very conservative approach here in order to go for the upside I would need to see a push above this high the last week's high near the 1.2150 zone and then we could take it from there so guys that's it for this session I really really hope you found it useful and thank you very much guys for your views for your likes for your comments thank you very very much um, I hope you found it useful um, if you want to join me later on, my trader's uh, tea time is always uh, 12.30 GMT. Just a quick uh, mentioning that um, tomorrow there won't be any espresso nor tea time. Well, we will resume with that on uh, on Wednesday, but uh, today still we'll have the uh, trader's tea time. So yeah, 12.30 GMT, join me then and uh, we'll take it from there. So have a wonderful trading day, guys. Stay safe. Thank you very much and bye-bye.